again, Orchestra Class, and welcome back. Uh, we're going to get started now in just a moment. Once you get your instruments set up, uh, I need you guys to get your instruments in tune, please. So take a moment to pause the video and get your instruments in tune. And then we'll get started with our string warm-ups number one. Okay, so now that you're in tune, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna get my metronome set at 60 beats per minute with my little eighth note click going on as well so I can feel the subdivision of eighth notes. We're gonna start with the very beginning again. We're gonna start with quarter notes only going through D, E, F sharp, G, A, and then backwards. When we go to the repeat sign, we're gonna do the same pitches but then do the variation on measure A. And then when we play all through that, with another repeat sign, we're going to repeat the same pitches, but now with the variation on B. If you would like to watch first before you play, we'll do this, we'll warm up two times. Get to playing position otherwise. Starting on a down bow. One, two, three, four. Just a reminder, before we do this exercise again, or this warm up, we have to make sure we have a good bow hold. What I remember seeing in some of my uh, Flipgrid videos and being in class is that some of you still want to use the tip of your finger on the stick. It's not the tip of the finger. Remember, it's the first crease of your middle finger and ring finger. And then you're going to place the other two fingers, index and pinky, accordingly based on whether you play violin, viola, or cello bass cello bass, all four fingers going to go over the stick with your thumb tip bent into the stick right underneath or the opposite side of your middle finger's first crease. Now that goes the same way for violin viola, except for violin viola, you're going to bend your pinky tip and place it along the right side of your uh, ring finger on the stick. Again, everybody should have a bent thumb, not a straight thumb and relax. Okay, let's try this warm up again. One, two, three, four. Okay, so now that you're warmed up, let's go into our measures of success for String Orchestra Book 1, and we're going to open to page 16. On page 16, we've already talked about retakes and the bow lift, okay? But I'll give you a minute or a couple seconds to pause the video so that we can get set up and find page 16. We're going to be look at number 225 and 226. So on number 225, given retake on beat three, you end on a down bow in that quarter note. 
beat four, you'll see a little apostrophe. That's your lift or retake marking. That tells me and you to lift your bow and circle back around to probably another down bow. If you look at measure two, beat one, you have another down bow marking. And you'll see this happen for the rest of the exercise. Now, look at the exercise real quick and let's review. Do we have the right clef? That means you have the right book. Violin should have treble clef, violas alto clef, cellos and basses should be reading bass clef. Then you should have a key signature right after that. So just to the right of the clef, you should have two sharp signs. They are F sharp and C sharp in that order, okay? Now, after the key signature, you should see a time signature. The time signature says four, four time, which means we get four beats per measure. Let's get a metronome set up, and I want you first to air bow and count the rhythm. Okay, so your bow should be out to the side. Remember that we're gonna bow in front of our arm and we're not gonna use our whole shoulder to bow. We're just gonna bow up and down along the right side of our body, sitting in our chair or bases your stool. Okay, so we start with the down bow. So we're gonna close our elbow and put our bow up so we can have the down position started on beat one. We're gonna count and air bow the rhythm. Remember that on the rest, we have a retake. So we're not gonna count anything but we will lift the bow back around and we'll show you what that looks like in the air bow. Here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, left. One, two, three, left. One, two, three, left. One, two, three. Now the very last measure just has a rest. So you shouldn't have a retake at the end. Let's try that one again. Reset yourself or retake. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Now you'll notice when I do the air bow that my arm circles around for the retake. So that's what we do for air bowing. Now let's try and play it. What are the pitches? We should have A's in the first measure, G's in the second measure, F sharps in the third measure, two E's and a D in the very last measure. Let's get set. We're starting on the open A string. One, two, three, four. Let's try that one again. One, two, three, four. Now let's pause the video and go ahead and take a moment to look at 227 Walking Horses. We want you to look at all the pitches, the bowing, and the retakes. After you're done with that, restart the video so I can, we can go over it together. Okay, so now that you've had a time, a uh, little bit of time to review this on your own, let's talk about what is happening in this piece. So we have, of course, the same key signature. We have the same time signature as before. And now we're gonna add the repeat sign to this. As you can tell, the very last measure, instead of having a rest uh, without a retake at the end, this time it does have a retake because on the repeat, we have to retake for another down bow at the beginning of measure one. So when we end this piece, we still end on a retake, but like we did on the previous exercise, if you saw me in the video, I lifted my bow anyways on the end, even though there was a rest. 
So we just let the note ring rather than playing it. So we don't just keep bowing through the note, we just lift the bow when the wrist happens so that way the note can just ring to end the piece. So let's get started by first air bowing and counting the rhythm for number 227, Walking Horses. I'm sorry, I said 227. I'm at 226, Walking Horses. All right, so my, <laughs> my air bow is set up, my bow arm is on my right side of my body, and I'm right in front of my right arm, not in front of my body, okay? Let's get started. We're gonna count and air bow together. Get set, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Okay, now let's try singing the note names or singing along. You can do this with an air bow and have it in your left lap or uh, violins, violas, everybody else, bass and cellos, you can just hold it in your place and finger along. Or violins, violas, you can hold it in guitar position. And when you're in guitar position, you can still hold on to your bow by placing it in your index finger and letting it hang, making sure that the bow strings are facing away from you. And then you can just cup with your thumb on the opposite side. That's just another way to do that. Otherwise, you can just place your bow on your stand if that's more comfortable. I don't want to get my put this down because I have nowhere to put it. So I'm gonna hold. It. I'm gonna hang it here on my finger. Okay. So here's our first pitch. D D D D. That's too high for me to sing, so I'll sing it down an octave. D. Okay. Here we go. Singering. One, two, three, four. D. F sharp, E, D, F sharp, E, D, F sharp, E, G, F sharp, E, D, D, F sharp, E, D, F sharp, E, D, F sharp, E, G, F sharp, E, D. Okay, now that we, we know the notes names and what they're supposed to be on the fingering, we can work on the bowing now uh, and play it all together. So if you need some time to go over it by yourselves, please stop the video and then come back when you're ready to play it together. All right, welcome back. Let's try playing 226 Walking Horses. Playing positions. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Okay, so if you're ever having trouble with anything, uh, whereas reading the pitches or you just can't get your head to wrap around everything and stay on time with everybody else, we're gonna then go back a little bit and just do one measure at a time. For example, when we're playing this exercise, I wanna just do the first measure. And I wanna just look at the first measure and see what it's supposed to sound like and work on the movements. So easily enough, we can tell that the first two beats are a skip. Do you guys remember what I mean by a skip? A skip is when you play one pitch and then you skip a couple notes from the scale to the, ne to the next pitch, which is higher. Or for example, here, D is your first pitch and you go up to F sharp. What pitch in between D and F sharp are you skipping? That's E. 
So if you remember the D major scale that we've been wor working on, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D, the first three pitches, we're missing the middle pitch there of D, E, F sharp. So E is taken out and we skip right away, hence the skip. So if you remember, <clears throat> excuse me, if you remember from your interval study, this should be a major third. All right, so if you start from the first pitch, go up one, two, three, D, E, F sharp, we skip a third. So we go from the tonic or the root pitch and skip to the third. And then we play an E. So then we go back down to the second. So one, three, two is the intervals, not your fingering. So don't get that messed up, but that's how the, the, uh, the intervals work. Let's try playing real quick, just the first measure. One, two, three, four. Let's try that one again. One, two, three, four. Did you notice something? Measure two is exactly the same. So now let's try playing measure one and two and add that retake. Here we go. One and two. One, two, three, four. Okay, now look at measure three. Measure three is exactly the same as measure one and two, except for the very last pitch, where we added G. So now let's try playing measure three only to work on D, F sharp, E, G. Just measure three. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Let's try that again. One, two, three, four. All right. And let's go to measure four. All we're going to do on measure four is walk down the scale F sharp E D. So the really hard part here is not playing measure four. It's playing measure three and four together. So let's try doing this. So let's play measure four first, and then we're going to work backwards just a little bit. Here we go. Measure four only. F sharp E D. One, two, three, four. Again, one, two, three, four. All right, now I want you just to play beat four of measure three. I want you to play that G right before measure four. Ready? We're starting on G. Get set, one, two, three, four. Let's try that one again. This time, let's start with the up bow because beat four of measure three, that G starts on an up bow. So we're gonna start from the tip of our bow. Just place it down on the string with your fingers on the string ready to go. Except for basses who should be on an open G string. Here we go. Start with the up bow now. I'll give you one, two, three. One, two, three. Let's try that again. One, two, three. One more time. Again, starting on the up bow. One, two, three. Now let's try combining measures three and four. Ready? Starting on a down bow. One, two, Three, four. One more time. One, two, three, four. All right, 
So work on that by yourself. So you can go ahead and pause the video or we can go right into playing this one more time. One, two, three, four. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Here we go. One, two, three, four. All right, guys. Good job today. I will see you guys again this way tomorrow. Bye.